so grateful you're here. Hi everyone. Just wait a couple of minutes because you guys on the um, Facebook are a couple of minutes behind. Hi everyone. And I know it takes you two minutes to reply to me. Um, so welcome. Hi Alana, welcome. Hello darling. Hi Anurada. Hi Alana. Hi Juliana. Good day to you all. Are we ready for another installment of Welcome to My World? And today's theme is called Undefined and Unconfined. Because if you are undefined, no definition, you are unconfined. Hi Tanya. So that's all great for me to say that. But what is it that we can journey with today? So where is it you create definitions of you? Where do you start to define you? When you're waking up in the morning, do you define yourself by what time it is? Do you define your life by what time it is? If you go to have a shower and then you look in the mirror afterwards, do you define yourself by what you look at in the mirror and define yourself in the mirror? Or do you define yourself by the judgments placed on you? Ah, judgments. Do you define you? Hi, Valerie. How many judgments do you define you by? So take an example of when you are getting out of the shower, you've got wet hair, you've just washed your hair, it's all getting ready to get dried, and you look in the mirror to put on your cream. How many judgments of you do you have? And what do you do with them? I'm going to give you a little example. So I will look in the mirror and not only do I see my mother, I hear my mother and I hear my mother's mother. What do you mean, Jenny? What are you aware of? When I was younger, my mum would look in the mirror and say, oh my God, I'm looking more like my mum every day. This is a programme because it gets you to define you as someone else. You react against it create a stability point, a stratification, a reaction, a resistance, a conclusion, a judgment. But you also make yourself right or wrong by that. How much, if I look in the mirror and see my mum, do I know that my mum actually received herself in that 10 seconds? Well, the first thing I do is I tap into that energy and I am vulnerable with that energy because I get my mum did not receive herself very well. My mum would judge herself for how she looked and how older she looked in comparison to her mum. Now my mum lived till she was 70 and my mum's mum lived until she was 96. My mum had so many judgments of living old and therefore she died quite early at 70 year old. But going back to the mirror, I don't know why I went down that line, but going back to the mirror, when I look in the mirror and I hear my mum's points of view and I see my mum in my face, because already I've duplicated everything my mum is and I'm living as that, what do I do with that judgment? So I can walk away and go, oh my God, I'm getting more like my mother every day. And therefore I've aligned and agreed with my mother's reality. She's aligned and agreed with her mother's reality. And then we all align and agree with each other which keeps it stuck. Or I can ask a question and begin to melt something. So when I look in the mirror and I see my mum, I ask a question, what can I be for my mum? What can I be for my mum's mum? What can I be for my mum's mum's mum? That they were never for themselves. That if I allow that energy into my world, will undefine them as the wrongness they thought they were and allow them to be received. So beginning to acknowledge where you don't receive you can open up an X-Men's world of different definitions that other people hold. That actually, if you broadband yourself across all of them, can unlock them all for all of those people if they choose to. 
This is where past, present and future for X-Men is not real and true, that we can change something instantaneously by being present with the energies that others will cut off or define as wrong. So would you like me to talk a wee bit more about the cutting off and definition bit? So how much do you define you as right or wrong? And I'm not just talking about physically, as in when you look in the mirror, but energetically in regards to your relationships with your partner, relationships with your children, relationships with your work. Ooh, ooh, ooh. These are all definitions, conclusions, and like it's a reality that you create where you're actually aligning with it and making yourself right, which makes them wrong, or defending against it because you feel wrong, therefore you'll make them right, so you're wrong and you'll say the martyr thing, you know, oh, this always happens to me. I'm such, it always happens to me, it's not fair. This happens to me all the time. This is where, sorry, my computer's wobbly today. This is where we really look at how we create our world. And if we hate something, we will continue to create it. So looking at my mum, continually to creating what my mum hated about herself and what she hated that she saw in her mother meant that she was the effect of it and it would run her reality. So everywhere she would look, she would see the wrongness of her own mother staring back at her and therefore re reflecting that it was her reality. Therefore it was her, which made her wrong too. Because if she made her mum wrong, she's made herself wrong as well. So beginning to really be aware of where you start to make yourself wrong can open up something else. And there's a few things in the chat here. Let me get my glasses on so I can have a look. See, I'm getting more like my mother every day. Um, Sue's cotton about her mom as well. Same, 70, didn't receive herself. Um, Anurada, I always bought that I can't understand people and people don't understand me. So I don't even try create relationships. Wow, let's talk about that. Hi, Jasna. So really looking at, if you don't understand someone, okay, where are you looking for the connection point that you're right to understand them and get what they're saying? What if they're, where they're speaking from is actually so alien to you, you just need to say, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're saying here. Where is that you're defining your reality against them and making you wrong instead of allowing yourself to ask more questions? What is it, my aware X-Men friend, that you hear in their heads that does not match what comes out of their mouths? That is where you go into, hmm, I'm aware there's something else going on here. What other questions can I ask? Hi, Maureen. So looking at what is it you're aware of, what definitions do you have of this conversation? What definitions do you have of you in regards to this conversation? Where is it you're so easy to make yourself wrong and say that you don't understand them and make them right and make you wrong? And then, my dear friend, do you walk away and make yourself wrong for making you wrong and make them more right? <laughs> I can see her, she's nodding her head in the background. So we create this perpetuating cycle where we start off with the right and the wrong and then we reinforce that by the conclusions and justifications that we have in our worlds around that. So part of that thing about where my mum would look in the mirror and see her mum reflected back at her and she didn't want to be like her mum, look like her mum and tried so desperately to not be her mum that she actually created herself as her mum. Now I have this information so when I look in the mirror and see a very similar pattern then it's about me asking okay so is that true or is that a family programme 
that I, as a female, have to align and agree or resist and react to, to create a polarity? What if I didn't create that polarity? What if none of this was right or wrong? Then it would allow me to be that undefined, unconfined. If you are undefined, you cannot make yourself right and you cannot make yourself wrong. So it's like a 10 second choice. Because if you're undefined and you try and define your undefined, then you're making yourself right or you're making yourself wrong. Even calling yourself an X-Man right or making yourself wrong. Because your definition of what X-Men is will create something as something. I did some magic there. That was awesome. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Um, did you see it? It went in and out. Yeah. Did you guys see it? Cool. So I don't know what was going on with the trans the, um, the camera, but it totally disappeared and came back. So when you undefine yourself, then you've got no definition that you're undefined. You probably won't even acknowledge that you're undefined because if you're being undefined, then you've got no form, no structure, no significance and no brain. You're not actually analyzing, which means that you're out of being here and you're actually being present with everything you are as a being. <coughs> this is actually a really big topic and trying to tap into it in a Facebook Live isn't the easiest, guys. So if you have questions, hi Nuro, if you have questions about this and about like how we define our worlds, I'm very happy to talk about that. So if you've got questions, darlings, I would love to hear them and let's see how we go with that. But basically when you get up in the morning and you look at your clock to see what time it is, is you being defined as something? When you go in the shower and you have any judgment of you, then you're defining yourself as something. And that can either be the right way to be or the wrong way to be. Oh, my body's looking really good today. Tick, right. Therefore, what are you making wrong? Because when you make something right, you also make something wrong. And it can be, oh, but, you know, I've got a big but, and therefore that's still cellulite blah, blah, blah. So... How do you have conversations with non-human lines about definitions? Well, you've just defined the whole conversation in more ways than one, Maureen. Why would you even want to discuss this with someone who's not willing to hear it? So the first question, whether they're humanoid or non-humanoid, as you put it, is can this person hear this conversation? Do they want to? How much definition uh, do you have about being righteous and your point of view to put it on to someone else to get them to receive it and therefore they will receive that, take on your point of view, therefore you're both functioning from the same aspect. Does that happen in the real world? No. Can anyone else have your point of view, Maureen, ever? They can have an understanding of it. We can all say, oh, for COVID, we've got to wear masks, so we'll wear a mask. But do we all have the same points of view about wearing that mask? We have similar, but we won't have the same because we put it through our own filtration of how we define things in the world and how we write or wrong things. So in getting someone else to hear a conversation, they will not hear it unless they're willing to be open to that. The greatest invite to anyone about change is being the change yourself. So if you work on yourself and be the change yourself, then others will either pick up on that and say, wow, she's different, what she's doing that's so different, and choose something along the line. So Maureen's now saying there's something that wasn't what she meant. Sorry, darling, if I read that incorrectly and took it to a different space than what you were asking for. So let me let me wait until you find the words. So definition about definition alone is a limitation and a conclusion. So when you've already judged that someone cannot receive or judged that you have to put it in a way so they can receive, then you're trying to get something right and wrong and fit into a reality 
instead of creating a whole different non-reality and inviting them to that. This is what X-Men is about. X-Men is being beyond the definition of this reality and choosing to create a reality that's so different that other people will join in. Now, part of that's what access is. Access is so different. You you know, it's very much a Marmite thing. You love it up to a point, and there's a bit where you go, that's enough of, that's enough of that. That is the point where you have to look at what it is your definition is. Because if you allow whatever that is into your world, you're only undefined when you have no right and no wrong in your world about you. So what is it that you're making right, Maureen, about how others should be with you? Because you can't make anyone receive. It's like, um, you know, it's like that, that old saying, you know, if you take a horse to water, you can't make it drink. It'll either be thirsty and want a drink or it'll say, no, I don't want a drink. What are you taking me here for? You didn't even ask me a question. So what question can you ask these people, Maureen, that will allow you to have a greater awareness of where you can talk with them about different scenarios and different ways of being. And I get from your question, like, how do I do to change the world? That's exciting to me, because when you're wanting to change the world and to change those around you, again, the best place to start is with you. Because those who see that occur with you will ask for some of that too. And sometimes it can take a couple of years and sometimes it can take a lot longer. And people choose what they choose. So how are you guys doing? Maureen's here now, yeah. Okay, so everywhere, Maureen's saying, talking to a specialist about something that needs attention in your body. So definition labels are needed in the conversation. Totally, tick, great, brilliant. Okay, so I get definition sticks me, but I'm in a loss with words. Okay, so, so this is where like, as as many of you know, like I'm defined and from this reality as a multiple sclerosis sufferer. It's in my notes. When I go to the doctors, that's the first thing they say, how's your MS? I'm not Jenny, I'm not a person. For me, my doctor sees me through the illnesses that I have and how I show up in the world by her form and structure. That's fine, I can work with that. First thing is I give her the answer that she's expecting and then I move on and actually talk to her about why I'm really there. So it's like, what way can you be present with everything that gets given to you with your specialist? And what way do you receive that information? And in what way do you then respond to it and make it real and true from their reality? Because get this, guys, when you're aware and someone tells you, oh, um, that cough you have sounds very much like a COVID cough. OK, so first of all, you go, oh, don't be so stupid. And then you might walk away and go, I wonder if I have, because already there's been an implant in your world about their point of view. You've heard it with their words and energetically it springs up something in your world that you react to. So the response, oh, don't be so stupid, is righteousness. And when you are so right without asking a question, then it normally bites you in the bum because then you walk away and you say, God, I was kind of sharp with that person. They were just trying to help. You make yourself wrong. You've made yourself right. You're now making yourself wrong. You're now making them right to make the situation better. Then you're like that. But what else here? Then you make yourself wrong because you were wrong for standing up and having your point of view with them. Are you ready? Do you get it? And we go on this like never ending trail of right and wrong. Is it anything to do about what the specialist says or is it more about how you actually talk to you after that? What is it you hear from your specialist? What is it you hear from your doctor? Where is it you're present with what they're saying? And as Gary Douglas says, you know, 
what is it that you're aware of here that's really true for you and what isn't? Let me see what you said, Maureen. Where could be an interesting point of view for it all? Oh, yeah. And what's really interesting for you? What is really true for you? Because when you're being interesting point of view, you've got no definition of what's right or wrong, which means you're being infinite being. When you're being interesting point of view, you have no definition about what is right and what is wrong. Therefore, you're not in judgment of you. And you can allow yourself to be. Therefore, you are being you. Hi, Riata. So, Maureen, when you go to your specialist, it's like you can hear from them everything they say. You walk away. What's real and true for you? What action do I need to take for me and my body? Body, what's required here? And then follow through with that. Definitions are not wrong because this reality creates them everywhere. Okay, so the, the trees are green, um, unless it's this time of year. The grass is green, the sky is blue. These are definitions, but we're taught that they're that, those definitions. And like, my husband's colorblind, so he sees the grass as an entirely different color than I see it, but he still calls it green grass. But for him, it's more a brownie color because he's colorblind. So what is it that we've learned to filter through the world around us so everything does fit in to the right and the wrong way to be and when we start to undefine that even if we've had a humongous change even just by having your bars run at what point after that do you start to define your world in regards to who you are what you're doing what that means now, I'm talking about things like the type of car you drive or the fact that, I mean, literally last night, I this last night, it was like, it was really weird because it, it brought up such an awareness for me. So sometimes whenever the big change in the class, I go, right, I'm going to take a photo of myself. So I took a photo of myself and I'll post that Facebook and blah, 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 blah. And I thought, what the heck am I doing that for? Because that's what you do in social media. Yeah, but did it really require to do that? Because what that's done is created a stability point where I've defined myself as this much change in regards to this class, in regards to my life and where I'm at. What did that re what was my agenda with that? Was that to make what I chose right and me right? And therefore, if I was choosing righteousness, who was I making wrong? And I went, fuck, okay. So really, what is it I was asking to be with that? And like with that, there's an energy comes up for me. And this is where I'm, I'm trying to show you something as, as it's happening. Because what it's bringing up is like the energy of actually presence, being present. But being present means you've got no definition of you. Because as soon as you define you, You've put yourself in a stability point of this reality and you've made yourself right or wrong. It's a very interesting conversation and it's one of those ones that's got no ending, you know. Um, so from there, I can look at, right, okay, this energy has come up for me in regards to me posting last night. What was I trying to create? Oh, it was marketing for my business. Oh, it was a way to see myself five years down the line on, on Facebook memories, blah, 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 blah. What was I trying to create and did I create it what if it was all about creating the awareness I'm now talking to you guys about again that's a definition it could be all of the above and more so what is it that you know about you that you're pretending you don't know about you that if you allow yourself to access that energy of you so you let it in, basically. We'll open the doors to different possibilities. What is it you've defined you as that is not you? That if you allow yourself to pod and pock that and undefine you, will create a different reality. 
it's a very deep subject. And like, I mean, I've looked at this all my life because, um, and Anna Rada brought it up as well, because I never got other people's conversations. Like people would talk about stuff and I'm like that, what, what does that mean? I never got it. If people, someone would tell a joke, it always had like a, a tagline at the end. And I'm like, I know I'm meant to laugh, but what's funny about it? I don't get it. It never fitted in with my world because it was a very defined and confined way to structure yourself in regards to others. And this is where X-Men and Access Consciousness allowed me to see myself and be present with the undefinition of me, even though I don't know what that undefinition is. So that undefinition we call X-Men, for me it's like um, allowing myself to be with my difference, allowing myself to be wrong from this reality. There's a whole lot of stuff coming up in chat, let me have a look. Um, uh, it is a deep conversation. It doesn't feel like anything. Being doesn't feel like anything, correct. I will have to watch this again. Cool. Because there's a, a wee bit in the beginning, I think you forgot, you, you missed out, Valerie, too. So basically, another way I would like you to look at is like, what do you create with your body that is a reaction to you being different? So every single class every single, um, all my life, I'm going to say it that way, all my life I've had reactions with um, allergies. So I would have a reaction with something I would eat, or it would be in the atmosphere, it would be a smell, it would be an animal. I would have all these reactions, allergic to trees, blah, 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 blah. And then access came along and things changed for me. Now, all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden, the past three years, my allergies have gone haywire again. Um, so I've been asking and using a whole load of different ways to work with this, including access processing and tools. I really got an awareness this morning because like, I have just attended two of the most amazing classes, ESB and SOP. And throughout both of those, so much changed in my world in regards to how I'm defining me and how I'm looking at who I am through the eyes of this world. And when I take off those lenses of that, what actually comes up for me is where I'm still looking at making myself right or wrong by creating my body as right or wrong. So I've been exercising, but I'm not losing weight. Therefore, I'm wrong. Um, I have a massive change and then I waken up in the morning and I've got allergies all over my face. Therefore, I'm wrong. I've done something wrong. All of those wrongnesses are a way to try and get it right so everything works and everything flows. Now, that is ways I'm still functioning in this world because I am creating my life as me being wrong to try and find the right way to be instead of choosing to be undefined and allow my body to walk without any definition that I place on it. So if I get eczema in my face, and I've got quite a lot of makeup on today, but it's very dry and very scaly my skin goes, and immediately what happens is I have a reaction to that. Oh my God, what have I eaten? What have I done wrong to create this? Now, none of that is a question. That's actually me perpetrating wrongness on me, which actually, does it <laughs> invite my body to be alive and thrive? Or does that kill my body even more? And then that judgment is like a little bit of arsenic. It does, it kills, arsenic is like a poison. It kills my body. And then I judge it for being more. And then I judge it for being more. And then I judge it for being more. So beginning to acknowledge that when do I start judging that is wrong and that it, what comes up for me is this yucky energy. Now, Dean's got an amazing thing called, um, oh, what's it called? Um, out creating yuck, I think it is. It's, a, it's a, um, something in Kajabi. I'll need to get the link for you. Um, Anurada will put it in chat afterwards. I'll find it for her. Um, so it's on Dane's Kajabi. I'm going to look for it now because it's bugging me. Um, so OCD that it bugs me. 
my library. Lucky enough, in, back in my page here, I have a page here that's Dean Here's Kajabi. So he's got these little um, like 10, 20 minute calls. Um, and they're all called different things. Let me just look. Sorry, guys, it's taking longer than I thought. Um, you got this, they're called. So this one's called um, Getting Over the Yuck. Um, and it's a Dean Here product. And it's just absolutely awesome. And I've been playing that and getting into where I have, I'll put this here, um, where I have the awareness of where I do create yuck. And it's like, it's not even got a, a definition. Like I know it's in regards to my allergies that I create. I create my allergies. I create this reaction. But there's a point of view that creates that because I'm already making myself right or wrong. Now, my question to me today is, where is it I've actually been being me and therefore I create the allergies and the face stuff especially to hide me? Maureen, you're asking, are these wrongnesses or what I've created that I've not recognised yet? Are they wrongnesses or what I've created that I've not recognised yet? Are they? Are they wrongnesses or what I've created I've not recognised yet? It's about being really present with where you do make yourself wrong. Looking at like the allergy thing, what came up was this yuck? And then looking at the yuck and actually asking, you know, what is that yuck? Not from a definition thing, so if I get what the yuck is, I can change it. But just actually being present with the yuck and going, oh, that's yucky. Okay, I've been, that's kind of judgmenty, something else, I don't know. It's like a sewer. <laughs> you know, it's full of shit. It's yucky. Okay, so can I change that? Yeah, so what do I need to be and do to change it? Show me, universe. So you're asking for that to turn up in your world. So when something is like that, it's like we can't change it by trying to work it out in our head, what is right and what is wrong and what should I say to mend that. It's about being present with it and allowing yourself to be so clear with it. So my invite to you guys is to look at yourself in the mirror for 10 seconds and not judge you. And let me know how that goes. For those of you who are sitting on camera just now and like can be part of this too it's like when when I actually look at myself on camera I'm already saying oh my hair's not and my hair's not is how far I got like pod and pock that if you can sit and be present with yourself for 10 seconds then what would it take to be present with yourself for 20 seconds without judging and then start to if this face that you're looking at in the mirror is your long lost friend what do you enjoy about that face? What do you like about that face? It's like, um, I saw a movie last night, I can't even remember the name of it, but it was someone who went back in time and met himself when he was younger, um, or met herself when she was younger. And basically, when he looked, and it was different sexes, when he looked at himself as a woman, he actually said, how pretty you are. But literally, the woman had made herself so wrong that she ended up having a sex change. And then when, she, when he looked at her, his younger self, as a different sex, he got how pretty she was and how beautiful she was. And we can see that in photos of ourselves if we look back and really engage with those and really acknowledge, you know, when is it when you were a kid that you, you didn't like yourself? But what if you pull out a photo of yourself as a kid and really be present with that photo? And what is it you didn't like? And was it you or was it projected at you? Then just join and create all the projections. 
then what kindness, beauty and honouring can you project to you at that age? Because when you really tap into the beauty of you, it's not skin deep. There's like, you know deep down there's something else. But when all you do is look for the reaction resistance on the surface, that's where we stay. So beauty is not skin deep. Beauty is being. And yeah, it's been a very deep conversation today and a different theme um, and a different engagement because I myself are going through my own stuff too. So it's like acknowledging who you are and in what way you can gift to yourself. And thank you, Maureen. She's saying, wow, thank you. Because when you start gifting to you, then it doesn't matter. There's no definition of what someone else says or does with you because you honour you. So you start by looking at yourself 10 seconds in the mirror and then pull out your childhood photos where like I can remember when I was like nine, I had this photo of me at school and I had like big teeth, but a tiny little face. So I had this massive teeth and tiny face and teeth that stuck out to here. And like every time I looked at it, I would, it's like literally I get a cringe in my belly, cringe. Because people projected at me that was wrong. Didn't me as a nine year old really know that was wrong? No, I just felt ugly because people would project it at me because it wasn't the right way to, to look or to be. And then it changed. I got braced and changed. But being stuck in that yuck is still there. I can feel it in my belly now. So like really sticking my energetic fingers in that little nine-year-old's being and just gifting. That being in that body to melt everything that she was living with then to change it. Because if you can change that then, then it changes you now. If you reparent yourself now, it also reparents yourself then. So you're healing your whole energetic timeline. Yeah, well, that went somewhere good, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this and being present. And then Riata's saying, how vulnerable can I be with me today? Present without any judgment. I love it. Thank you. And then lots of gratitude from you guys. I'm really grateful too. And if you do have that yuckiness, then that Dean here, um, I think it's like $50 or something. It's US. It might not even be that. Um, click on that and see if that contributes because that got me to energetically be present with a lot of the stuff that's underneath the facade of definition because when you've defined yourself as something then you confine yourself into that when you begin to undefine you unconfine but then you always start defining again so you're back in a box it's just a bigger box <laughs> so what would it take to get out of all the boxes and allow ourselves to be free of any confinement and they'll telecast on this. I'm actually getting my website done up, done up just now. So my whole website's changing. And next year, there's a whole load of different classes coming up. I'm, I'm creating a whole year full of classes for you guys to play with and dip into. That will be, um, some will be on clearing nights. Some will be like X-Men, some being used, some relationship done different. Um and then just like one-off calls, like what we're tapping into just now will be like some of the calls. So if something comes up on these Facebook Lives that we want to delve into more, I'll create a clearing night on them. And then you guys can either choose to engage more and then therefore we can get facilitated in more of this. Because the more that we actually talk about this stuff and bring it up for ourselves, if we change it for us and then we change it in our families, then... What does that create for our children and our children's children and our children's children's children? It creates a great future. That's my ask. What would a future without judgment be like? And how much fun would it be to be alive? That would be awesome. That's my ask. What about you? What would you like to ask for? So guys, thank you so much. It's been a bit longer today. Thank you so much for being present and take care. Mm -hmm.
have a wonderful world this week and create your life like it's never been created before and undefine your life like you've never been undefined before and be kind to you. Thank you so much for being on. Take care.